Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things, he asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars, and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Now to your top 10 headlines in just two minutes. Our heart goes out to all of those who are struggling, asking themselves, how do I go on without him? How do I go on without her? Tonight, the U.S. marking 1 million COVID-related deaths. Since the pandemic started, there was silence on Capitol Hill as flags were lowered to half staff. The local church is the hope of the world? No, as a matter of fact, God no longer dwells here. I don't believe that joy is a possibility, that our lives are better lived in community, and that we are called to love each other radically. The truth is, the church is on the brink of extinction. I refuse to believe that we are part of a story larger than our own, and we have been changed to bring change. Don't be fooled. Poverty is too overwhelming. Racism can't be overcome, and evil will never be defeated. It's impossible for me to believe things will get better. In the future, it will be evident God can't help, and you're wrong if you believe God can.
I am convinced that you can't turn things around. I would be lying if I said God cares. But you should know I believe exactly the opposite. God cares. I would be lying if I said that you can't turn things around. I am convinced God can, and you're wrong if you believe God can't help. In the future, it will be evident that things will get better. It's impossible for me to believe evil will never be defeated, racism can't be overcome, and poverty is too overwhelming. Don't be fooled. We have been changed to bring change, and we are part of a story larger than our own. I refuse to believe that the church is on the brink of extinction. The truth is that we are called to love each other radically, that our lives are better lived in community, and that joy is a possibility. I don't believe God no longer dwells here. No, as a matter of fact, the local church is the hope of the world. Good morning, Salt Shakers and friends. I trust that the uh, video clip has inspired you and caused you to consider the local church as the hope of the world. So I'm doing this to promote our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Church members, let's come and pray for the local church. Pray that the local church will be revived and truly be the hope of the world that our light may shine and that the people will see the goodness of God to each one of us. Come and join us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Presently, we are meeting on Zoom, but there will come that day when we'll be back on physical prayer meeting. So, see you this coming Wednesday. May the Lord bless you.